All right, I'm building the battery pack. The first one, this is the 280 amp hour pack. These are 280 amp hour cells. I've got ply on the outside and I've got threaded rod covered with uh, plastic tubing on top of that. Uh, this box that it's in is just a simple Costco box. It's kind of a very tight fit. I had to put a piece of three quarter inch ply on the bottom of it to give it some support, but um, I needed to raise the bottom because the bottom had a lip and the batteries wouldn't sit flush. So it's actually in there pretty snug if you can take a look. I've got all the bolts torqued down. It actually fits very well. Uh, the battery right now I've got it in a kind of a cross pattern here so I'm going from positive to positive to positive to positive to positive and then I'm running a negative 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 all the way around. I wanted to build the battery and leave it in its fixture. I didn't want to put it in one straight row you know charge this thing up to top balance it and then disassemble the battery and reassemble it so in this manner I've just got the wire that's uh, touching the terminal here uh, exposed and I'm going to uh, do a top balance from here so I've checked the positive to negative on each end of the battery and I've got the 3.32 which is what it came charged at what I'm going to do uh, from here is I've got another board that will sit on top the uh, BMS will go on top the battery disconnect will go on top the fuse will go on top of this also and then the battery cables will come out so I'm gonna start top balancing this thing solid solid cold welded crimp and I don't happen to have any um, the right I've got a ton of shrink wrap but I just don't have any for two or four out for whatever reason I didn't bring it so what I'm going to do right now is just uh, temporarily put some tape on it I mean this could work in the long term but Tape it for now. I'm going to come back with the shrink wrap. I'll just replace it. So I leave the end on because I don't want to fray all of the wire so if I pulled that if I pulled that off first that those wires would get all chewed up I'm trying to feed through there so now that it's through we'll go ahead and peel it off
Okay, so there we go. Equal conductors here, lengths, equal conductor lengths here. This is two gauge wire. And I'll come off of this with a four. Four out that's going to head over to the battery packs over here on the, the shelf. Okay, let's start running the uh, negative conductors. I've got a negative conductor here and here that's going to come to come to this bus bar. All right, the system's installed up and running. I did a bunch of testing on it, and last night was the first night running completely off of the batteries. Today it's about uh, 10, 15 right now in the morning and it's completely cloudy there is no sun visible at all it was raining uh, most of the morning so it's been a pretty not so great day the system started charging at about 8 15 in the morning which is what i really estimate that it is the charging time of day that it'll start in the morning anyway so let's take a look at some of the input here of what we got this this each inverter is running again off of the 12 uh, 240 watt panels so I've got 344 volts from that string right now I've put this on a meter and never seen it go over 420 so I should be good there uh, I am pulling in 1.7 amps at the moment and 612 watts we're still putting some power into this even though the weather is miserable right now take a look at this one I'm pulling in um, 354 55 volts 1.7 amps and 600 watts so it's about 1200 watts right now off of a possible you know 5700 at full rating of the panels but I think the panels really are at about 85% uh, they're used panels, so that number is probably another 15% lower. All right, so if we take a closer look at the battery, I've got it mounted inside of the uh, storage crate. This is the type of crate you can get at Home Depot or Costco. I think this is the 27-gallon one. These are EVE 280 amp-hour cells, and there's 16 of them, and they fit just that snugly in there. Um, on the very bottom of this crate there is a three-quarter inch plywood on the bottom and I have three-quarter inch ply on the top here uh, for the BMS and the uh, T-class fuse so the EVE cells are the 280 amp hour cells they are the double studs I did drill the bus bars to uh, put in the BMS leads the BMS leads are wrapped in the uh, wire loom just to clean it up a little bit there and I'm using the JBD 200 amp BMS there's the info on that and it does have the Bluetooth module in it running to the BMS I decided to take the two lugs and jumper them with a bus bar there copper bus bar so I could use a single lug coming off of those and use a larger uh, nut and bolt there off of that I've got two runs of one AUG wire going in this is a uh, 4 aught lug coming off on the C- minus. I've got the 4 aught that's running out from the battery I have the same thing on the uh, positive side over here where I have two runs of one AUG running into the 200 amp T-class fuse and then again I also have the uh, 4 aught positive line coming out comes out comes through the battery disconnect and runs into the bus bars over here so this is all 4 aught wire here running into each of the breaker panels the battery disconnects here the fuse this is a DC fuse by Nader came with the system as a package 
and I am running two aught wire into the system. Okay, coming out of the inverters, I have this really heavy jacketed wire here. This is called pendant wire. It's pretty rugged. It's meant to be uh, free hanging for long distances, so it's very heavy duty. Inside there are four conductors, and each conductor is four aught or four gauge rather, I'm sorry, four gauge wire. I've got two runs of that coming into the breaker panel. I've got the lines or the hots coming in to a double pull breaker, 60 amp double pull breaker to create that 240 volt uh, panel system here. Now I've got the charge verter set up also. I actually run it ran it last night to test it off of the Honda EM 6500SX off of the 240 uh, plug there so it plugs right in I was running this thing at about 70 amps I maxed it up to about 70 amps I would say this generator could easily not easily but it would push the full hundred amps into the battery if I wanted to but I think around 70 is probably its sweet spot. This battery was at 50%, actually was at 30%, and in about 30 minutes or so, or 40 minutes, this thing charged it up to over 50%. So it went up by 20% state of charge in about 40 minutes. Uh, the full time to charge this thing, this is 5,000 watts, and this is a 13 thousand or 13k battery so this is 5k 5 kilowatts so it should charge that battery in about two and a half hours at full 100 amps so you can factor that down a little bit when you're pushing less amps all right i got about half sun right now not too bad definitely not full sunlight but i'm pulling out uh 2.14 kilowatts, 210 kilowatts, 2.13 kilowatts, and 6.6 .6 amps, 312 volts, 1.9, going down a little bit, 5.6 amps, 320 volts, going down. Clouds covering up the sun again. All right, you can see the time difference now. It's 11.30, so maybe about an hour or so since the last video. I've got 79% uh, with an hour left to charge. I'm putting 3,500 3, watts into the system. It's about a half cloudy day really right now. So you know, this is only about maybe, I, I don't, wouldn't even say half sunlight. The key thing is that with this many panels, it doesn't take a lot of sunlight really to put enough power to charge this battery. Now this is only a 13K battery, but there'll be an additional five. So it'll be about 19. Okay, it's kind of a summary. Overnight, I used just under 3000 watts of power. That was running everything that I would normally run in the evenings. Uh, LED lights, uh, up to 8 to 10 of them, uh, television, laptop, phones getting charged. I've got uh, two different uh, internet modems, one for the Starlink and one for the LTE router that I have. So I didn't hold back on anything, and I used just under 3,000 watts of power over that evening. Keep in mind, this doesn't include anything like a microwave. I didn't use it, or it didn't include the refrigerator freezer, which runs off of propane currently. I do plan on converting that over to electric, as it's a dual fuel a refrigerator freezer will run off of propane or electric, and I do plan on running it off the electric. Now, during the daytime hours, I could easily do. Uh, washer or dryer or other heavier loads but I can actually pull because it's prioritizing the 
solar for the battery, I can pull up to 12,000 watts of power given, you know, how much solar panel array I have. So I could, for another $1,000, put up uh, a double, basically double the size of the system and have over 10,000 watts of solar panels. So that's uh, another option. I still have a little bit of work left to do to button up the system, and I still need to rewire the house. But I will provide updates on the system and how it's working as time goes by. Overall, I'm very pleased with the system. I, I know it's only been in for a short period of time, but I have heard some people having difficulties with the uh, EG4 6500s. Mine fired up on the first time. Everything started working properly, and so far so good. But again, I will keep uh, an update on that. So for this project, I appreciate everybody watching, and uh, stay tuned for some new things coming up.